Hey, this is Joel Duff. Welcome back to the channel. Um, hey, I just was reading on the New Creation blog. Um, bad on me for not having uh, looked at the New Creation blog in the last couple weeks. But uh, as you may have noticed, uh, I've been kind of absent from the channel for more than three weeks now. Uh, and I'm kind of getting back in the swing of things, but I have a huge number of other tasks that are going on. So we'll see what happens. But I couldn't help myself but to just jump on here really quick and and react to this article. I'm calling this an episode of Unscripted Duff because, yeah, I don't have a script. We're just hanging it out there. We can see what happens as I read through this article. It's a very short article. Uh, it's a republished blog post of Todd Wood. Uh, and I find the topic fascinating. And you know that I've thought a lot and have talked a lot about uh, the young earth creationist um, <sighs> dilemma of how to explain the corruption of the new world if there was an original perfect world and what would that perfect world look like if there wasn't any competition and there wasn't any natural selection and there wasn't any mutations and there weren't any and there were perfect genomes uh well now here comes this question one i've asked a number of times that todd wood is going to tackle here did adam and eve need an immune system right this is one of a hundred questions i've asked about Adam and Eve and the garden. What did they need and how did they survive right in the garden? Look, if this was a perfect paradise in which they were created immortal, unable to die. Well, I guess you could say they were able to die if they didn't disobey, but as long as they didn't disobey and they ate the fruit of the, the, uh, the tree of life, they would continue to live. So then that begs the question, well, do they mean, need an immune system? I mean, there couldn't be any viruses that could harm them. There wouldn't be any harmful bacteria in this world. Uh, so do they need an immune system in order to protect themselves from any foreign invader? The immediate answer would appear to be no. Uh, but then the second follow-up question, of course, is going to be, well, then why do we have immune system now? <laughs> like, where did it come from? You know, did God not create the original immune system and then somehow it popped into existence later? Now, why am I babbling on about this? Todd Wood's actually going to introduce this much better than I can say. He's going to talk about the problem, or I guess the challenge for young earth creationism, and he's going to try to rise to meet that challenge. Um, in his you know, typical style, which is, hey, I don't have all the answers, but here's some possible ideas. Let's at least talk about this. And of course, that's one of the things I appreciate about Todd Wood. It's not coming out all firing and just saying like, here's the answer. Duh. Why are, why aren't you, why are you dummies even asking this question? No, it's a legit question. And it's one that young earth creationists really need to think about. So without further ado, did Adam and Eve need an immune system? A while back, a reader asked me this interesting set of questions. Did Adam and Eve need an immune system before the fall? If they didn't, then was it pre-designed just for the post fall world? This is something that Ken Ham and others might be inclined to say. We'd say, like, where did X feature come from? You know, well, it was something that was built in the put in the original creation, like uh, the original design included some of these elements, but they weren't actually used by those organisms. Then after the fall, suddenly those predetermined characteristics that were designed essentially for after the fall, because God foreknew that sin was going to enter the world and this perfect state was not going to continue forever. So he prepared the creation up front, front loaded, front loaded variation. There's lots of different terms floating around in young earth creationist literature to indicate that there was some kind of uh, forethought into what the creation would need after the fall. And it was pre-loaded or front-loaded into that pre-flood world, All right? Not pre-flood world, the pre-fall world. All right. Then, or as this uh, person asking the question uh, suggests, or was, these, or was the immune system simply created after the fall? Is it a new creation? Is it like, okay, we had plan A, Adam would continue to eat the fruit and live forever, didn't need an immune system. And by the way, the same question applies to the other animals, right? I mean, other primates have a very similar immune system to ours, have all the same elements that we have. Really, all mammals have the same immune system we do. The young earth think that they also 
did not die prior to the fall, right? So we're all created uh, um, unable to die. Although, did they all eat of the, you know, the tree of life? Yeah, in order to sustain themselves, some people would suggest yes that that that, that was necessary. Um, but, all right, let's not get off of that tangent. But the point is, is that animals as well would have you'd have the same question: Did they need an immune system? Right. What would they be scared of? I mean, they're not going to die, so there's nothing that can hurt them. Or is the way that they don't die that God created them a perfect immune system? Yes, there are creatures out there that potentially could hurt them, except their immune system is so perfectly made that those organisms would never be successful in killing um, you know, that animal, even though that organism may have the ability to, or at least tries to kill them. Of course, even that idea um, kind of, you know, it upsets the apple cart sometimes. Like, you know, well, why would God create something that's trying to kill something that can't be killed? You know, it's a, you know, it, it can be quite confusing, right? <laughs> you know, when you really start getting down to the nuts and bolts of these types of things. All right, we're only through a couple of sentences. We've got to move on. This isn't a very long article, by the way. If they did need it, well, then what did they need it for? I was like, what did they need an immune system for? Were there natural evils for which they needed immunity? Were there things in the original creation that they needed immunity from? Um, will there be these evils also after the resurrection? All right. In the next slide, I mean, if there was a perfect creation and an immune system was necessary then, then after the resurrection, will we also need an immune system at that at that point? And what would that immune system be doing? All right, so as I point out here, the following article has been reblogged from Todd's blog, uh, and the views expressed aren't those of the new creation blog. I don't know about after the resurrection. Yeah, I mean, the, he, I'm totally fine with Todd Wynn punting on that one because uh, that's a really impossible question to answer. Very limited information on what, what that world would look like or that, that existence would be. But I've thought about a, a lot before the flood, and I know Todd Wood has thought a lot about these types of questions. Uh, much more so, I would say, than, than a lot of uh, typical uh, young Earth creationists. It's a lot more complicated than you think, mostly because of our expectations. I kind of knew where he was going with this, right, as soon as he said that. Today we live in a world dominated by the germ theory of disease, which works very, very well. And I appreciate Todd Wood for adding that clause in, which works very, very well. Now, he's immediately saying, look, I know that there are some skeptics out there that like to, in, in today's wacky world, we have people, including some Christians, who even deny germ theory, right? I mean, AIDS isn't caused by HIV, or there really isn't even such thing as viruses. Viruses don't cause the various diseases that we have. Um, and Todd Wood's dispelling the idea, right? He's saying, look, germ theory is a completely reasonable hypothesis to explain conditions we have in the human race today or in the human condition today the idea that specific infections infectious diseases are caused by specific agents like microbes bacteria viruses or what you know we that the average person calls germs right an example i mentioned last week is cholera which is caused by vibrio cholerae uh, which is transmitted through contaminated water. I mean, there's big problems with uh, cholera in some parts of, uh, well, certainly in Haiti right now, but uh, some parts of Africa that have experienced a lot of flooding. Huge cholera outbreak after this flooding and the mixing of, of wastewater into that, which creates this toxic pool, uh, which happens to be good for the growth of Vibrio, right? Not good for some other organisms, but actually a a a, uh, a very productive environment all right for some of these types of organisms other examples would be malaria which causes the micro which is caused by the microorganism plasmodium aids which is caused by hiv so right, he's giving examples of these are well established really facts that these organisms are the direct agents or causative agents of these particular diseases there are specific criteria that must be met to conclude that a particular set of symptoms, the disease state that we see, is caused by a specific organism. Right? For I mean, like 
uh, you know, ulcers. That's a disease state. There's a certain set of conditions, and it's been highly debated exactly what causes ulcers. Um, now today, there's a lot more evidence that, that that some ulcers, at least, are caused actually by an infectious agent, um, which for a long time wasn't thought to be the case. So that that's another case of a tie-in between an organism and a disease. Um, the immune system is part of our body that is supposed to ward off infections. Like that's the, the typical way we think of the immune system is that, hey, it's our defender. It's our shield against this outside world that is, you know, trying to attack us. There's so many different kinds of organisms that would love to use our resources. A crude way of saying like, I'm made of a whole bunch of resources that other organisms could live off of and survive. Right? <laughs> Lots of fat, polycarb, you know, fat and uh, sugars and DNA and all that stuff. That's that's good stuff for other organisms. Um, it's an amazing set of cells and organs that can detect alien things in our bodies and dispatch them. It is. It's incredible. An incredible system for identification of a foreign agent versus what we are. You know, you have to know what your cells are. And you have to know what a foreign cells, what a foreign cell is, because we have some very potent agents that can attack and kill cells. Um, and of course, sometimes our own immune system it gets a little haywire, uh, it, and it starts attacking our cells. That's called autoimmune diseases, right? Auto self, your 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 cells are attacking your own cells and killing your own, like your own cells, right? Creating damage to yourself. Right, so that would be an immune system that is, you know, not acting according, you know, to your best benefit. Um, oh, as he says here, uh, my favorite is the membrane attack complex uh, of the complement system, which basically pokes holes in bacteria and causes them to blow up. Yes. They, hey, no, I'm not kidding. It's technically called osmotic osmotic lysis. But that just means that the bacteria blows up. Yes, that's pretty, that's pretty much what it means. <laughs> Lysis, it just causes the bacteria to blow up. All right, great defense, yeah. And then if that's inside your body or you know between your cells, then you just get to enjoy the resources of that bacteria, right? Because they were made up of lipids and carbohydrates and uh, proteins, right? And you just to your cells are gonna take that stuff reabsorb it and then you're going to repackage it and use it in your own system right it's almost like a food source um such an amazing set of structures in biochemistry immediately calls to mind creationist arguments for design of course you know it's a it's a complex um you know some people might think of it as being an irreducibly complex system that is so intricate that this must be designed now so that, that sounds all great. Oh, look, uh, a, a, an argument for design. The thing about that argument for design is that, well, then if you start to say that, then what you're saying is you're, you're already committing to a possible answer to this question of, did Adam and Eve have immune systems? Because if it's so incredibly designed, obviously made by God and so intricate and perfect, then surely that must be something that was created in Adam and Eve right from the very beginning. Right. It's not something that was created later after all the creation is done after the six days. Right. Is, is God creating brand new things after the six days? That's not typical of a young earth creationist approach to um, the history of the world and God's action in the world. You know, creation is done and then he is maintaining uh, creation after the six days. And so if you're going to say this is amazing design, then you're going to have to look like, OK, so the dying had to be there. In the original creation and then the question would be well what was it designed for because if you're going to argue this is amazing design for attacking bacteria and killing them killing them but, but well, wait a second but those bacteria weren't attacking you right i didn't need to kill them because i i wasn't gonna die anyway but if there was no disease before the fall which is something creationists like me believe then what was the immune system doing okay i just said but, I mean, I could have read the next line because Todd would just uh, said it much more succinctly for me right there. If there were no pathogens, then what's the point of an immune system? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Now, Todd Wood does have a, 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 a I think a, mm, clever is not the right word because that connotes some sort of 
like uh, workaround system. Um, he has a partial answer to this question that is not often put forward and so is, is worth mentioning here. I'm going to read the article, so of course I'm going to mention it. To answer this question, let's go back to the germ theory of disease again. For uh, First of all, it works. Yeah, right? Again, he's stressing germ theory is real. That's, that's our current existence right now. This is the world right now. There is this thing called germ theory, and the theory is, is that there are um, organisms out there that are causative agents of diseases in us and other animals. And that's a real thing. That's certain, but it's not the whole story. There are other things in this world, other microbes in our systems that are not germs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And most people forget that, that most of the bacteria that are growing inside the skin here, of which there are billions, um, they're not attacking me. They're not eating my skin, right? They're cleaning up dead skin cells and eating on the refuse all right that's there but they're not actively engaged in a battle and a war with me all right this isn't me attacking them and they're attacking me we're going to see who wins this is um you know we're we're living in harmony uh with one another in fact the bacteria are doing me some good in a way many of those bacteria are taking up residence in the pores of my skin um, and they're happy there and they're not out of control and they're not attacking me but if one of these bad bacteria tries to move in and you know, like take its space right and take the resources it's using they may defend themselves right it's like hey this is about this is my spot i got this nice comfy area around this um you know at the base of your um follicle hair follicle right and uh, i'm not giving it up like, this is mine. Go away. And so your good bacteria can be warding off the bad bacteria. You can think of the bacteria as like actually an extended portion of your immune system. Um, okay, but I digress. They're just, they're just there doing their thing, not bothering anybody. Some might even be helping us by making nutrients accessible to us or by controlling pathogenic microbes that might otherwise make us sick. Mm, yeah, okay. That's what I was just saying. And we have different bacteria in different parts of our body. Like, you know, my armpits have different bacteria than on the surface of my legs and on my and in my eyes. I mean, I got bacteria everywhere, bunches of different communities, all right? Dozens and dozens of different species of bacteria growing in any one place uh, across my body. Our gut bacteria, yeah, my gut is full of bacteria and it is helping me to digest. Right? The microbes living in our intestines provide important metabolic functions. And they are not what we usually think of as germs. In fact, uh, you know, if you take a probiotic after being sick, right, you take a bunch of antibiotics, and what the antibiotics do is they're like they're killing bacteria. <laughs> it's like um, they're like, hey, your immune system isn't quite quite strong enough. Uh, let's give you a little uh, extra pep, give you an antibiotic and the antibiotic goes and kills a bunch of bacteria but also kills a bunch of the good bacteria too because it's indiscriminate like it doesn't know what a good bacteria and a bad bacteria is it's just like you know it's like a cluster bomb not a high precision uh weapon and so you need to replace those bacteria and usually that happens because as soon as you start eating you know, once you feel better and you eat any food, there's going to be bacteria in that food and that bacteria is going to start to grow back into your intestines. Uh, but if you want to get the right mix of bacteria back in your intestines, then people will eat a, take a probiotic, which is basically just like, hey, I'll swallow a bunch of bacteria that I know are like, like good bacteria. Right? Contrast the reality, uh, contrast that reality with the average person's concept of bacteria today. Everywhere we go in the developed world, we're encouraged to live an aseptic lifestyle with hand sanitizers, antibiotics, and even antibacterial soap. Yeah, we are a little obsessed with the uh, cleanliness. Um, and I talked to my class about this, and we talk about uh, um, the, uh, the hygiene hypothesis uh, and a number of other things um, that suggest that uh, um, that we actually do need to get a little dirty. You know, we need to be exposed to bacteria, a wide variety of bacteria when we're young, um, which because that helps train our immune system. 
Uh, and if we don't train our immune system, then our immune system doesn't really uh, function to its best ability and it can overreact. Uh, that would be, um, you know, allergies. So, but we tend to think of bacteria as being bad when the vast majority of bacteria don't really bother us. Um, certainly the rise, well, well, I got ahead of myself. We have a cultural misconception that all microbes are bad and therefore should we should kill them all. No, definitely don't need to kill them all, which might be causing more problems than it helps. Certainly the rise of antibiotic resistance and real pathogens has been alarming and it's an attribute to our overuse of antibiotics, true. So there's more to the microbial world than simply pathogens. All right, so he's building up a case for, look, when Adam and Eve were around, there were bacteria, right? And those bacteria weren't necessarily, uh, well, actually he would say they weren't bad, right? That they couldn't cause disease. Uh, there were no disease causing flesh eating E. coli or something like that. Um, and there's probably more to the immune system than just fighting them. So the immune system might be more than just, it has to live in harmony with the good bacteria because your immune system isn't going around attacking all the bacteria in your body. Like I said, you, you have trillions of bacteria living in you and on you, and yet you're not waging war with them. So your immune system is, um, you can think of it as kind of a regulator. All right, it is, it is assessing, you know, the, the, the new kinds of bacteria and determining which bacteria are, are ones you should live in harmony with and which ones we need to expel. Um, Joe Francis, a creationist, um, uh, I think microbiologist, has argued the immune system is just as important for allowing good things in as it is for keeping bad things out. Another possibility is that the immune system was intended to keep microbes in their appropriate places. Um, that would assume that infectious disease is largely due to microbes moving into environments where they weren't supposed to be moving into, which implies that the immune system is the thing that's gone wrong, not the microbes. So now here, here's, here's his real answer to this question. It's really, yes, Adam and Eve had immune systems. Those immune systems were there um, to prevent bacteria that aren't supposed to be there from getting there. After all, I mean, it's, this is reasonable. It's reasonable to say that, okay, how did God accomplish, right, the hypothetical scenario here is that um, Adam and Eve um, didn't, wouldn't die, all right? And in the garden, well, I mean, I don't even want to get into what's in the garden versus outside the garden, whether outside the garden is different. For most creationists, it, this would be true for the whole world. Wherever that fox or, you know, cat or llama or whatever it is that God created and is on the earth, on the seventh, sixth day, um, would be living in a place and it wouldn't die, right? That's, that's like one of the main mantras of young earth creationism is that death before the fall is not allowed. Um, but we'll get to the exceptions in a moment. Um, so for mammals, no death before the fall. Uh, yet uh, they must have lived in a world with bacteria and viruses because no creationist is going to say that viruses popped into existence after the fall, right? They had to have, you know, they had to have been somehow good viruses. Um, and they'll say that even viruses killed bacteria because bacteria aren't really alive. And so there was that cycle of, of bacteria being recycled, right? Being uh, exploded and then they use the, you know, the, then they regrow and then the viruses, you know, invade them and explode them again. And like all that is somehow acceptable before the fall. That's not part of the change in creation. I'm sorry, I'm a little off track now. Let's go back to the animals couldn't die. But it's reasonable to suggest that if the rest of, oh, I guess not, that's why I'm saying it's like, you know, if there's bacteria and there's viruses and there's other microorganisms uh, that aren't technically alive, have nefesh life, biblical life, then they're not immortal, right? They're things they're not referred to as not dying. You know, plants could die. A little bit of debate among young earth creationists about, you know, plants and their death. But lots of young earth creationists would say that plants are like, yeah, plant could die. Uh, because they're not really alive. Um, and so if all those things happening, there have to be decomposers, organisms that decompose. If there's an organism that can decompose, you know, why couldn't it decompose you? Well, if we had a perfect immune system, it would be defending you against those decomposers. 
right? So God establishes this perfect set of immune system characteristics that is shielding Adam and Eve and shielding all the other mammals from the other agents out there. And I guess you could say those are, well, I don't know if you want to say those are natural evil agents that are, that are in the world prior to the fall. Um, but just as a side issue, of course there's natural evil in the world before the fall because, you know, <laughs> there's this thing called Satan, right? <laughs> a fallen angel, right? That, that exists before Adam and Eve sinned in the perfect creation. There are other more well-known failures of the immune system like allergies and a faulty immune system isn't some wild speculation. Now you say, look, okay, so look, Adam and Eve had immune systems, but the original immune system was perfect. It worked exactly the way it was supposed to. It eliminated and did not allow a single bacteria that would have been harmful to Adam and Eve in, and it allowed all the positive bacteria to be there, and it didn't overreact, right? Whereas today we have like, you know, that immune system has some broken pieces to it, doesn't always function exactly right. The outside world has gotten worse in the sense that maybe it's gotten, uh, you know, more uh, virulent, right? The viruses and the bacteria have, through natural selection and other carrot things, have become more aggressive after the fall. And therefore, our immune systems aren't necessarily able to protect us the way they originally were. Uh, and our immune systems themselves are kind of broken. Right? You would say, like, I mean, you got, you know, you could bring in genetic entropy and other ideas that young earth creations have and say that the immune system is no longer it's not functioning the way that it should be. And therefore, outside agents are getting in and wreaking havoc. And that's part of the reason why we don't live, you know, as long as we could, is because we're being under constant bombardment and our immune system can't uh, prevent all of that. So there's lots of possibilities and lots of areas to explore to understand the function of a pre-fall immune system. In the meantime, we should all ease up on antibacterial soap. <laughs> I agree. Right, so there's there's uh, Todd Wood's quick um, reaction to uh, did Adam and Eve have immune systems and my reaction to Todd Wood's stuff. Now, I just want to show you one of the comments down here. So we got Robert Byers um, chiming in. Robert Byers is the ubiquitous uh, commenter on all blogs, or at least any blog that he hasn't been kicked off of, <laughs> um, and including, you know, I've seen Robert Byers many, 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 many times on my own blog, uh, and he is way out there, young earth creationist. When I say way out there, he has some fantabulistic uh, ideas. Um, but he does say something in here um, that that I thought was uh, worth mentioning. Uh, you know, so he's really quick right away. He, he always has, you know, a very strong opinion about everything. Adam and Eve did not have an immune system. Yeah, despite what Todd Wood has just argued here, there was no way to die or decay. Like, yeah, there's no way to die or decay. So if there was no way to die or decay, if God decreed that you can't die, then why would you have an immune system? Now, here's here's the thing about that response. It's like, okay, here's my here's what I would say. Uh, if you're right, Robert, if you're right, why did they eat? Why did God give him food? Like, here, I'm giving you all the food from the garden. I'm sorry, do you need to eat in order to live? I mean, if you can't die and you don't eat, then you can't, I mean, God's already said you can't die, right? Then you, we could just go on and on with hundreds of examples. Like, oh, well, why breathe? How, does Robert Byers even know whether there was oxygen in the atmosphere in the original creation? Maybe oxygen appeared after the fall. Right? Because Adam and Eve didn't need oxygen, the other you know the other uh, mammals didn't need oxygen. Ah, but trees needed oxygen. Oh, actually, they make oxygen. Oh, did you know they actually use oxygen too? Yeah, in the winter time. Um, but there's lots and lots and lots of other organisms, right? Snails, right? Single cells or small critters, right? Lots of little tiny insects that many creationists think aren't alive. And therefore could die before the fall so they're going to need some oxygen and they also need an immune system right so he, 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 that's that's the thing that always never gets discussed i wish todd would have discussed that here but um how do you have an ecology where you have okay here's a set of organisms like all ver land vertebrates 
that have blood and so therefore are nefesh, all right? Like living flesh that God created. And all of those are the organisms that somehow couldn't die before the fall, right? No death before sin. And remember that no death means no death of these specific organisms, not no death of any form of life. Because uh, that form of life is not considered biblical life. Right? So not really alive. So plants, uh, fungi, bacteria, algae, um, lots and lots of, I mean, sponges potentially, uh, you know, insects and crustaceans and, well, you know, maybe not see the other thing. Where's, where's the line? So if all of those could die, in fact, they can eat each other, right? There's no prohibition like saying, you know, you, you know, that you can't, a, 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 an ant can't eat a piece of plant or, uh, you know, a snail can't eat another microorganism or something like that. Right. So, but because none of that is death, you're not killing anything. It's just a resource. Um, and you're allowed to use those just like God gave the animals, the plants, like all the plants of the garden to eat as food, right? They needed a resource in order to continue to live. And Adam specifically and Eve are given the, the tree of life to eat from. Okay, so uh, you, you, you see the, you see the thing here. There's e the, the ecology of the rest of creation seems to be one of kind of like similar to today. Those organisms would like have immune systems. They'd have parts that could allow them to eat other organisms. They would like there's there's nothing you would have to say like really drastically changed after the fall because it could have been operating just the way before the fall. And yet there's this whole other set of organisms that couldn't die. And therefore, what were the immune systems doing? You know, the immune systems in these other organisms were working, they, were, they had the purpose that we think of they have today, but for some reason, these other organisms, their immune system was for something else completely, and then it changed. Um, it's just, a, it's just a weird juxtaposition when you sit down and you actually start thinking through just like, Make a list for yourself, like all the different types of organisms you imagine being in the original creation, and then ask yourself which of these are obeying are obeying the rules that are similar to today, and so there's sort of a continuum, and which ones had like a clean break, like went from I can't die to I'm decaying and I'm able to eat other things, and uh, you know, a complete change in their ecological state. Um. Yeah, so Robert Byers is like, hey, there was no way for them to die or decay, so you don't need an immune system. To say it was supercharged is to like saying they could have fallen off of, of a mountain. I mean, well, they couldn't fall off a mountain. Like, like Robert Byers is like, they couldn't fall off a mountain. Or if they did fall off a mountain, they would just bounce off and be like, eh, no problem. I'm not even hurt at all. I think for a lot of people, they, they, it's not even possible for Adam and Eve to even stub their toe, like, you know, even gotten hurt which makes you wonder, do they even need an immune system? Now, interestingly, the immune system would be kind of like what Todd Wood's talking about here. The immune system isn't just for, uh, you know, uh, I just got, you know, hit, you know, I just got shot, now I know it, because I had this, or it's also a warning to you that there's something wrong and you need to try to fix it, right? I got tooth decay. Maybe I better get my tooth taken care of. Like it's a signal to me that something's hurt. You wouldn't want to not be able to feel. I mean, there are some unusual people that can't feel, right? Especially in their extremities. And therefore they step on things and a nail goes right through the foot and they don't even know it. That's not good. You would want to know that. But Adam and Eve, would they actually be able to step on a nail? You know? Or maybe they could step on an able to go right through the foot, but it wouldn't matter because they can't die and they wouldn't feel it and uh, they would just pull it out and everything would be fine. Maybe it would just immediately heal up. Right? I, you know, what, what is the vision of what exactly would happen in those situations? The tree of life was there and powerful since all the fall, uh, since after the fall, an angel was to stop humans partaking it. Uh, thus they live forever. What creationists must embrace is the glory of biology. So after the fall, the whole biology, without God's help, morphed in itself into uh, anything to preserve itself. All right after the fall, all of a sudden, oh wait, wait, God's not here protecting me. I got to protect myself. Therefore, 
I better grow some big teeth and learn how to eat other organisms, or I better defend myself, and so I'm going to make preventative things. Um, I'm going to get uh, venom. I'm going to, you know, like every organism is like, I'm just out here for myself. Uh, and I'm going to do whatever I can to survive. Into including attacking others. Our immune systems are just reflections on nature's groans. It shows how glorious the original eternal biology was. Uh, yeah, actually, Robert Byers actually kind of makes a tiny bit of sense here. Um, more, you might be thinking, well, that's what the heck is he talking about? Well, usually I have no idea what he's talking about, um, but I kind of get his point there. Um, yeah, so did Adam and Eve need immune systems? Yeah, I mean, Todd think uh, Todd Wood seems to think that yes, there was a there was a function and a purpose for an immune system, and he would just uh, simply appeal, I think, to a a decay of the con a decay of the ecology of the situation such that organisms now that had their place before are now um seeking out other things right in a way kind of reflecting what robert byers is saying like after creation like it's every organism for themselves they all become kind of selfish all right i think that's it uh, i don't have a whole lot more to get out of this I'm just, um, I'm always interested in um, individuals who are willing to spend at least a few minutes like trying to conceptualize what a perfect paradise original creation would be within the context of young earth creationism. Because I find that uh, the Ken Ham, Answers in Genesis sort of way of talking about the original creation is just like, it was perfect. Everything was perfect, um, and very little introspection about that. Um, and I don't think that Todd Wood's argument is is uh, compelling to me. Um, but he has a lot more going for it than the the average creationist uh, response to these types of things. All right, let's leave it there. Thanks for hanging out with me. Talk to you later. Bye bye.